Chicago. This is a short series of three videos describing a technique for clearing yourself of spells. So this first video is called the first step. It's the first step of three. And we're going to get some definitions clear. We're going to talk about what I mean a spell to be in this sense. And we'll talk about understanding if you're under a spell. There's many different types of spells, and I'm going to focus on one, you as an individual, the spells that you may be dealing with in your life. And we are all faced with living and working in groups, so there's group spells. And then we'll look at some examples the two main areas that spells affect us are our states of mind and our behaviors. The goal of a spell is to change your mind in a specific way and to elicit specific behaviors. And then finally, in this video, we'll just quickly point to what's going to be in the next two. But before I go on, I just want to give out a disclaimer that the material here is not meant to be a therapy or replacement treatment. If you're working with a holistic health practitioner and you're happy with that, great. Uh, I in no means want to imply that you do anything that you haven't yourself researched and are doing uh, for your own benefit. So basically, I'm just providing information that is meaningful to me and that I thought would be meaningful to others. This is not a sales pitch. I'm not selling anything. There's nothing you have to purchase to participate in or to watch or to learn from these videos. The model I'm using is called the internal map of reality. Uh, I won't be going into the details of it, but I will be using some of the information from that. This model is not in the mainstream, um, maybe for various reasons, but um, the main point is that um, finding information about this, you will have to go to the alternative sources. Anyone who's interested in the internal map of reality, then just contact me and I'll give you some links. So I'm giving information for free. I'm using this alternative model of the mind called the internal map of reality. If in these three videos there's reference material that's needed, I'll make it available for free. There will be research and publications uh, be available in the near future. They're almost finished now, and I'll, I'll get to that later. But just quickly, a little bit about me. I'm an educator and health professional and have been my whole life. If you want to know more about me, you can go to my Facebook page, and uh, you can contact me there. You can see some of the things I've been up to, um, but I won't go into it in any great detail now. I do have associations with two of the local universities here in Halifax. Uh, Dalhousie, I've been working with them for at least four years offering uh, courses in meditative approaches through their health and wellness. And with St. Mary's University, I've been working with their Center for the Study of Sport and Health, doing research, doing projects. And out of that, um, at least almost eight to ten years of work there, we're going to be releasing a joint paper. There is also a publication that I have on the uh, available through most of the online stores called Lovebirds in a Cage. This book is not necessary for this uh, series, but if you're interested, you can get again go to my Facebook page, and if you think you'd like to sample it, you can get a copy of the first chapter, read it. If you like it, you can download it. It's relatively cheap, but again, it's not necessary. We are finishing up uh, our research at St. Mary's, and the 
research paper will be published, uh, hopefully in January, February of 2019, and it deals with transformation, transformative learning. And that's what this is all about. How can you make change in your life? So what is a spell? Well, from my vantage point, I think a spell is something that is for the benefit of someone or some group other than you. If someone casts a spell on you, it's for their benefit. It's not for you. That's the, probably the first thing to, to come to the realization. Quite often, when I talk to people, they have no idea why they do what they do or why they have the feelings or thoughts. They don't know where the source is. And this is common. You might know, but it's quite common that you don't know who is casting the spell. The goal, again, is to change your state of mind, to make you feel or think or have some kind of alternative state of mind that is to someone else's benefit. This can generate compulsive behaviors. You may not know why you do certain things you do or crave certain things. It's definitely not to your benefit, again, to others. But here's the good news. There are happy spells and there are sad spells. Not all spells are bad. In fact, we are designed by nature to be spellbound by the amazement of things around us. And I'll get into this more later. This is a natural feature of being a human in this plane. So I guess the bottom line is yes. You are under a spell. In fact, you have no choice. Many people call this reality an illusion. In a sense, it's a spell. But the tr problem is, there are others who are playing with this or manipulating this. And if you talk to others, ask others about their sense of not doing exactly what they want to do, but feeling compelled and you might find that other people feel that they're being compelled to do things that are not in their nature. If you keep a journal, that's an excellent way of seeing how things evolve in your day-to-day -day life that are to others' benefits. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't help others, but you should know why you're doing things and do the things that you feel are a benefit. To do this, it helps if you can hear your inner voice and know your voice. Now, many people do not hear their inner voice. I'm not saying this is good or bad, but I think it's helpful if you can listen to your own inner dialogue and know your voice. Look at the results in your world. Are you getting the results that you want, that are a benefit for you and your loved ones? Our reality can be anything. And there are those among us, unfortunately, that will change your reality to their benefit. The purpose of this series of videos is to help you break the spell and to begin to see the world the way you want to. So what types of spells are there? Well, let's look at the individual. Have you ever noticed when you wake up in the morning or when you're getting ready to go to bed, but sometimes something comes over you. I know sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I have this weird negative voice that comes in me. and I have to address it and you know, put it to bed, so to speak. But that's a good time to notice whether or not something is triggering inside you. And it's the self-talk. The self-talk that we all have, if you listen for it, Sometimes that voice is not yours. I like to think that if you have a goal, if you have something that you want in life, your goal can change, of course, but initially right now you have a goal. Are you moving towards it or are you moving towards someone else's goal? Relationships are very valuable and 
anyone who has fallen in love will know the amazing spell. Everything changes when you enter into a relationship. And that's another form of spell that can be very, very beneficial. Yeah, we all have addictions and cravings. And this, again, is a natural part of our ecosystem, of our physiology. You need to be addicted to things. Otherwise, maybe you wouldn't eat. You need to have cravings. But it's when they are out of control, and again, when they're for someone else's benefit. Well, yes, we all live in a family or can come from a family. We all have that experience. And you can recall on your own all things that you were taught in your family and you began to believe. Later on in life, you join organizations, and these organizations will give you rules and try to focus you in uh, a specific way. Communities do the same thing. I used to live in a very small community, and they had very strong values and beliefs that you begin to adopt. I work with a lot of people from different cultures, and their cultures spin spells and tell them how they can relate to other people. And again, it's not that these spells are bad. It's just that when you don't realize that that is what's going on, that's what's important, just becoming aware. And of course, there's countries, and we all know the chessboard game of one country against the other, and the game that goes on in politics. Um, won't go there right now, but I think everyone's aware that it's a bit of spell spinning. What I like to address is the natural law of nature. In nature, you will be conditioned to react in certain ways to certain things. But in nature, nature never lies. It's only people that lie and tell things to misdirect you. But if you listen to the natural way of life, and if you can start to tune into that, you will begin to condition yourself in a natural way. I like to think of that as the law of nature. So let's look at states of uh, mind. This is one example of how spells can affect us. I'd like to just point out first that we tend to think of states of mind in terms of emotions, being sad, happy, angry, depressed, whatever. But anyone who has done any amount of meditation will realize that there is a wide variety of states of mind. Huge, infinite range. It's unbelievable once you begin to break away from the conditioned states of mind. Music can uh, give you a state of mind. Sometimes I put on music deliberately to alter my state of mind. The issue here is that, as some of you uh, may know, you can do your own research here, Music can have embedded meanings and messages. Food, you would think, is very um, basic, but food is a major input. We eat food every day, most of us, and the way we procure our food and the way we prepare it and the way we eat it and how often we eat it changes our state of mind. I have friends that whenever I'm around, I feel happy. And other friends, whenever I'm around, I kind of feel doubt. What's going on there? So your interaction with friends and family will change your state of mind. Here's the bottom line. It's all about beliefs. Through all these interactions that we have in our day-to-day, we develop beliefs about things that can elicit a neutral state of mind, and positive or negative. Becoming aware of what things alter your state of mind in a constructive way or a negative way or or just make you neutral. It's an awareness thing. And we'll get more into that in the other two videos. The other end goal, or I, I suspect probably the main goal of spells, is to change your behavior. Ultimately, 
control or condition you to react and behave in a certain way. Now, many, many of the spells that we have conditioned ourselves to over the years have very productive incomes. The spell that you have to get up in the morning, go to work, earn an income, look after your family or your other loved ones, very productive. But it is kind of a spell, isn't it? You don't have to think about it. But then there are spells that produce destructive behavior. The goal here in these three videos is to help you find resourceful behaviors and to begin to turn off or break away from destructive behaviors. Again, this relates to your personal life story. It's nothing that I can tell you to, to do or not to do. And what's destructive for you may not be destructive for me. It's very much an independent thing. And your behavior will determine whether or not you reach your life goal and how your story of life rolls out. Again, always be aware when you have a behavior, just think about who's benefiting. Is it you or is it some entrepreneur getting rich from your behavior? So what's next? Now that we've identified who I am, what the goals of this series of videos is, and what, is, what I think a spell is, a series of conditioned responses, what is next? Well, we're going to go into the next video and just look at how to identify the spells that you have that are resourceful. And not going to dwell on it too much, but it just begin to be aware that, hey, there are things that I do automatically that are very resourceful. You want to keep those. And you want to close the door and break the rest. And using the model that I referenced earlier, you won't have to learn to meditate. You won't have to fast. You won't have to do all kinds of things. Now you can. Those who meditate will have an easier time with this than those who do not. But the purpose of this is to help those who just can't find the way or the time to do meditative practices. So you just shut the door. And once you learn where this area is in the, your personal internal map, you can learn just to shut the door. So I'd like to thank you for tuning in to this and watch for the next video. And we'll look at identifying resourceful spells. Thank you very much for taking the time and watching this video.